Coming up this week on the Digital Lifestyle Show 788, Richard and Gary here. We've got lots to talk about. We're talking about running Windows 10X on a Lumia 950XL. Uh, believe it or not, got it working and up to our experience on that. We're looking back at one of my retro uh, videos of Windows 8. Really that bad. We'll be looking forward at some Windows Insider news. We've got some EV vehicle news and some like, charging, that kind of thing. Some... Um, Feature packs coming to Windows 10 and lots more. So let's get straight to Richard and Gary. <laughs> Good evening, Richard. Good evening, Gary. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, here we are again for another week uh, of our te tech news. We've got um, quite a few things we want to talk about this week. I was playing with Windows 8. I've also played Windows 10X on a Lumia, really. <laughs> yes, but uh, I can talk about that. Uh, I know, Richard, you had a couple of things you wanted to ask Gary about some EV news as well. That's right, yep. Yeah, and we had some uh, insider builds and a feature release or a feature pack, an update to the feature pack as well uh, this Ooh. week. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> yeah. So before we, we dive into that, I know, Richard, you have a couple of EV stuff, so we'll, we'll, we'll start with that this week. You, you had something you saw was interesting. Yeah, Gary. I mean, I was, was going to ask you what you made of um, uh, of Shell acquiring the um, electric vehicle charging net net network. Is it Ubertricity or something? I think Ubertricity. Yes, Ubertricity. Yes. Uh, uh, it's an interesting. I mean, there, there's definitely been a lot of acquisitions, and um, I think there's going to be more consolidation in this market because there's been basically a land grab on the, these chargers. Now, Ubertricity are. This is a bit of a misnomer because it, it, it says on the press release they're the largest public charging network in in, in UK, which I guess they are by a number of charges, but in terms of number of people charging on them, I think is, 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 there are others who could potentially be, for example, who could come up and say they would do more charges. Um, but Ubertricity are the ones who have the charges and the lampposts um, throughout London, which, which is a clever skiff system, and, and, they, and they've done pretty well. And they, they, they've they got quite a large subscriber base, which is obviously what Shell are after here. They want to get that out there. I mean, it, it does seem odd, all these gas and oil companies buying up EV charging and you do wonder if, if they sometimes have ulterior motives to slow things down maybe but I don't think that's the case with Shell. Shell have Shell have really emphasised in the last few years their, their move towards trying to have a, a, a non um, fossil fuel um, future um, and they've been diversifying quite rapidly in terms of what they're picking up and they're, own, own, they're, one of, they're going to be one of the first com companies to have convert a, a petrol fuel for caught with purely EV I know we've got the grid serve one, which is pure EV from design, but this will be, they're, they're actually currently converting a, a UK petrol station to be, be a, a fully EV station. So I think Shell have got, got big plans in this area. It makes sense from a financial point of view. Um, I don't think it's going to affect, affect the Ubertricity's operation that much. From what I understand, it's still going to be the same UK management of it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it just means they've got a bit more funding behind them, which would be useful. Uh, so they can they can do their expansion to more than the few the few cities they're already in. Um, cool. Do you reckon? I mean, looking at this, looking at you know, the companies like Shell getting involved, do you reckon there's any risk or chance that the you know the UK's EV charging network may end up? I mean, I, I just saw the, the news about the um, the the uh, ionity in Norway, uh, the, the the price hike there. Do you think that, that, that there could be a price hike coming to the UK as well with this kind of consolidation? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a worry, and I think the pricing is already too high for a lot of people um, on public charge on charging. Um, I mean, ubiquitousity has been pretty cheap up to now. Um, we. I mean, Norway's that, that I honestly think in Norway is really interesting. Uh, I mean, because I, Norway's got particularly cheap um, electricity compared to a lot of the rest of uh, Europe, um, and the fact they're hiked it up, it's been at a reasonable level there on Ionity for quite a while. I mean, I think uh, Ionity are charging themselves. Uh, I mean, their cost of Ionity is horrendous. I mean, it, it, it's way more than charging. It costs more to charge an EV than it would cost to fill up a, petrol, a really expensive petrol car on Ionity um, if you pay full price. But obviously, the whole point of Ionity is it's owned by certain manufacturers, particularly the Germans. Um, and if you have one of their cars, you get a discount. And part of the reason it's pushed up so high is so they can discount it down low and make it look like they've got a good deal for their vehicles. Uh, you're right, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I think that's particularly the case in Norway, where where they've not got the market penetration they were hoping for. Tesla's outsell you know, the German manufacturers quite severely. 
Um, Volkswagen are, are hoping to make big penetrations into Norway. They will be able to say, let's say, buy one of our cars and we'll give you two or three years free charging on our honesty. Look how much money you'll save. Um, and I think that's part of the reason behind it. I mean, also, it, it is you, you do worry with with the um, Ionity network that there is there are vested interests in there who have vested interest in maintaining the status quo and keeping petrol diesel cars on the road. Um, mm -hmm. um, and if they can outprice it, make it more expensive than it should be, um, that's where people like Ridserve come in, um, in the UK particularly, that, that will add some real competition. And and there's others out there now. Um, I noticed this week, um, the bit of EV news I'm quite happy to see is that um, Osprey, who used to be NG, one of my favourite charging networks, they, they have net deals with quite a lot of the pubs to put charges in their, in their um, car parks. Um, they now have got a subscription scheme where if you pay £5 a month, you can then charge for 25 per kilowatt hour, which is, which some people will say, oh, that's way more expensive than charging at home. Well, you are going to pay a premium for charging on the road because of um, all the infrastructure costs. But 25p a kilowatt hour is pretty good. And that means you can definitely charge an electric car cheaper than you can pay for petrol, even if you have to charge on the road. And you always have to remember with electric cars is that most people, and I know this is not the case for everybody because not everybody has the ability to have off-road off parking, um, but for most people, they can charge at home before they start the journey. So the first 200 miles of the journey are done at a very cheap rate. And if you're, if you're using it like Octopus Agile, Agile, you might even be able to, have to say you, you charge for free, although that's not been the case recently because Agile's had, I mean, that's that, that's another story we haven't really talked about, but, but the nuclear power plants have been offline for quite some time in the UK, causing electricity prices to go up through the, the roof on the, the on the, the electricity market at the moment, uh, which has affected the Agile Towers. So the people have been jumping ship from that because they've been getting hit, hit with higher bills than they would normally expect. It. They're becoming on the back of the line again fairly shortly. And that, that should be a less of an, less of an issue, um, and it'll get windier as well, which obviously that helps <laughs> with uh, generation costs. Um, but yeah, I mean, certainly if you if you can charge at home on one of these cheap type towers, I mean, there, there are towers where you can charge at home for five p a kilowatt hour um, for four hours at night, which would be enough for most people to do their daily commute. Um, so, I mean, if you, if you think think about the fact that. Um, the average size of, of, a, of, a, of an EV battery is around about 60 kilowatts. Um, so, well, will be. I mean, the probably average is probably about 30 at the moment, but forthcoming cars, it's probably about 60 um, at 5p a kilowatt hour. That's pretty cheap to charge, that's like £3 for a whole tank. Um, so, you're going to get two, three hundred miles off for, for £3. Um, so, <laughs> you can't really argue with that. Mm. No, not at all. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's good. Well, yeah, it's interesting to keep the eye on the uh, car manufacturers because, like I said, they have a vested interest in in um, keeping the, the the fossil fuel market going. Don't they? Yeah. Although, they, I mean, they often they, they talk about manufacturers and um, and other news. I mean, did you see the, the Audi announcements this week? They 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 are dropping a load of their models and are not going to make them in uh, in in petrol variants at all going forward. Um, mm. So so I think that the, there is move for some of the legacy manufacturers. Some of the legacy manufacturers are more ahead of the market than others. Um, so um, it'll be interesting to see how how they go um, on that. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's good. We'll keep it. Keep an eye on that one. Um, so, what else did we have? We want to talk about this. Oh, let's let's start with then this. What I've been playing with uh, today. <laughs> so, um, my Lumia nine nine. Do you know the? Remember the? What was the Windows Mobile? Was it? A, I can't remember the make of it now. That never died because people got Android on it and they had. Uh, <laughs> do you remember that one? Yeah. yeah. I can't remember the exact model it was, but I think it, it was. Um, it was one of the Windows 6.5 phones, one of the last ones that was made, the Windows Mobile 6.5. And people managed to get all different operating systems on it. Anyway, it looks like I think the, the 950 is turning to that of this of this generation. Mm -hmm. uh, because I've, in the past, I've had the Windows on ARM running on here. But today, I managed to get Windows 10 X running on this uh, 950XL. Um, now, I'm currently locked out of it at the moment. <laughs> um, because I can't get past the the sign the, the signing screen after a reboot. Now I've not had that problem most of the day, but then now I've got stuck. And I think it needs it needs a key press, and the it, the USB keyboard's not working. 
um, and the arrow keys or none of the other keys seem to seem to do it. I mean, you can turn on, you can turn the volume up and down and things like that. But I can't sign in, so I think I'm gonna have to reflash this today, uh, reflash this again tomorrow. But it actually, I I'm, I was surprised. It works really well. I did capture some video of it and got it on our, on our YouTube channel. Um, so maybe I'll share the desktop because I can't show you real time. I was hoping to do that was why I was doing it. But uh, I'll I'll show you my uh, I'll share my screen and you'll be able to see it. So uh, yeah, I got it's got the start menu exactly as you expect it to see it on the on the ones we've seen so far on the emulators that we've we've seen so far. Um, the applications and you see the start buttons there at the bottom. Um, and you've got the, the task switcher. The applications are all are all there pre-installed. Settings is all there exactly as you'd expect it to be. And it's fairly responsive as well. It worked, Wi-Fi worked on it. I think I even got some of the apps working. OneDrive worked eventually. Um, yeah, I've got Microsoft News, I think. I got, got Microsoft News working and uh, a bit of issues getting it focused, but yeah, got uh, and the weather app and all that kind of stuff, all all work fine. And what I, I was surprised is that the the performance of 10X is better than the performance of the Windows 10 on ARM, which I've been playing with previously. Uh, so the question it's a good is, uh, the question is, uh, can you make any phone calls? No, I can't make any phone calls um, because only the Wi-Fi works. Cellular doesn't work. <laughs> So uh, no Wi-Fi. You could probably make a Teams call if you can get Teams installed on it. Ooh, um, yeah. They see, see there's a new challenge for you. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think the camera works either. So there's a few limitations because it's quite complicated how you get it installed. You've got to inject drivers into it, and uh, yeah, that gets a bit fiddly. But you see, Action Center works on there. Um, it, it, you see all the new animations for signing in and signing out and all that kind of stuff. So while it was working, it worked really well. Um, I couldn't get it to create a pin, and I think that's the problem I've got there now. Is uh, you need a pin to be able to sign in, and it, that bit kept failing. So I think that's probably one of the reasons I've got the problem with it. But yeah, it works. Uh, I, I was surprised how well it works um, for what is a you know a, a bodged unreleased operating system. So I'm not. Uh, recommending anybody try this and uh, i was saying to richard Foster, i did get the inevitable comments of people saying somebody said to me well that's great for you and the other four people that use microsoft phones i think this guy <laughs> probably got the wrong end of the stick there this isn't my daily driver that i'm trying to use you know keep alive or whatever this is just because i could rather than because i should <laughs> actually richard you did tell me richard you told me just because i can i shouldn't <laughs> yeah, just because yeah. you could doesn't mean you should although that said you know in case of when you see that mounting you see why why, why climb it because it's there <laughs> yeah uh installation was fairly quick actually as well so um considering that it's unreleased untested hacked together um uh, I'm, I'm surprised how well it works uh so did you get a chance to try anything with uh continuum uh with with with, with it at all no i didn't get anything working on, on drivers for the, the usb stuff Okay. So the only thing I really could test was the was the apps and settings and and OneDrive. Um, there's an issue with Microsoft Edge as well, which is an ARM issue. You can't use Edge um, by default because the uh, GPU acceleration doesn't work under ARM. So this applied to, um, to to when I was trying to just the standard builds of Windows 10 on ARM. You have to run uh, Edge with the command line to disable the GPU, which works fine when on Windows 10, but when it comes to Windows 10X, it's locked down. You, you're not going to get to play with those settings. Um, so I don't think that's going to work. So I don't know whether it, it could be injected into the build like I did with the, the driver stuff, but I don't know. But anyway, it's good to see that it, you know, it, it kind of works and it does a good proof of concept that Windows 10X is actually quite a lightweight operating system. It definitely feels lighter and uh, a, a lighter weight system. It certainly runs cooler than Win Windows 10 made the, uh, the Lumia very hot. Uh, the battery lasts about two hours, something like that. But with this, it, it seems to run a lot cooler. And the battery lasts quite a while because you can't sign into it at the moment. <laughs> and you can't make calls or take pictures or go on the internet. 
<laughs> but apart from that, apart from that, <laughs> what, what did Windows 10X ever do for us? <laughs> <laughs> There's an episode title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think it it, it makes um, it gives me a good feeling that Windows 10X, whenever we do get to see it, and whatever guys it comes out, that it, it it's going to work well on lightweight devices. And some of some nice touches on there, the signing screen, the out-of-box experience, the shutdown screen, they've got nice animations on there. So it feels more polished than Windows 10. In terms of how light. Yeah, I mean, I'd say it's going to work well on lightweight devices, so long as you're running, you know, UWP or those kind of, you know, the, yeah. the apps. It works because, because it's, it's not going to come with, with, with Win32 support out of the box, is it? So no. that is always, I mean, that's my big concern about it. It's like, you know, we had this with Surface RT, you, you, you have, the app support's got to be there to 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 make it viable. To make it viable, viable, viable. The, the nightmare scenario is people start putting you know Windows 10 on 10 on those boxes instead, which would be a bad day around, I suspect. Yeah, I, I think um, whatever we see, I, I imagine these will be secure boot, lockdown bootloaders. And, um, you know, you, you won't be able to put anything on. You won't be able to do anything other than recover. And yeah. That's it. In, interesting. It's got the um, when you go in the dev developer settings so there's the remote management of it which is through the browser just like hololens where you can get on and see the app processes and that kind of thing whether whether that will be included on release devices i'm not sure but it might give you some interesting ways of being able to manage them over uh to manage windows devices over https that kind of thing rather than through the other ways that you would do it through uh, sort of standard windows so it, it's got a lot of uh, i've seen a lot of potential but like it a lot of it's down to how they market it uh, what the device it comes out to, and how this Win32 emulation, what it looks like if it ever, you know, becomes comes to the system, which is rumored for next year, not even this year. So we'll see. But yeah, I, I really, I really hope now that Microsoft uh, make something available at some point for developers and enthusiasts to try and play with this themselves. That, that would be well, nice. I mean, I mean, we do have Ignite coming up at the start of March, don't we? So. That would seem yep. to be the next point where it could happen. Yeah. Um, although, you know, and, and then of course build comes after that. So I'm guessing that, you know, it, I would kind of hope there'd be something, you know, announced around Ignite and then, you know, build might be when developers really can get their hands on stuff. Although, as I said before, I think the danger with it is you need to give, to, you need to give devs a lot of time in order to, to, to port the things that, that you need and you have to persuade them that that's a good idea to, to do. So, you know, that's a, my slight concern again about the whole thing is is Microsoft are asking quite a lot of, of developers who have been burned quite badly in the past. Although, that said, Gary, I'm sure you've, 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 you've heard this too. I was, was very heartened to note that um, um, one of the Microsoft stars is, is joining the Project Re Re Reunion team. Yes, indeed. That's Rich Turner, who uh, gave us, uh, well, was play, played a major role in the likes of Windows Subsystem for Linux and also the Windows ter ter Terminal. Uh, he's now, I think, um, if not leading, but playing. Oh, it appears Alexa's woken up. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's not heard of Rich Turner. She's, 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 she's definitely missing out. Um, yeah. Uh, but but yeah, so, so uh, that was announced this this day this week, and 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 obviously Project Re Reunion is the latest effort to try and join together all all the various dis disparate tech. I think perhaps a recognition uh, that Win32 isn't going away anytime soon. Um, yeah, Gary, I mean perhaps you'd care to talk more on what that means because I think I think that's possibly connected to 10x and and yeah. the yeah. and what's I mean, happening with all the things going forwards. Yeah, I think if, if anybody could get. Windows 30, Win32 apps working properly and under 10x, it might be him. Uh, <laughs> I would say not him personally, but as in leading the team, you know. As in leading the team, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, in, in terms of managing the project to make it work, because he does seem to have the right focus for those sort of things. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very pleased to see it happen. happen. I think it's a big year. Yeah, because that's that's what I think. The subsystem for Linux has been pretty successful for what it the scope of the project and, uh, and and what it does so kind of take the you can see where the experience of that would be good for win32 support on 10x absolutely yes well definitely i mean certainly the the uh, the, the way um the wsl2 works in terms of you know the very lightweight containers that you do think hmm i wonder if that's what's going to happen with you know with the win32 bits on 10x uh, but also i think it's just the ability to to bring a a, a fully realized product to market and then stick with it. Like uh, again, so it says turn around fast. Uh, I think uh, WWSL2, again, it's 
iterated quickly and has been useful and usable for, for developers. So yeah. uh, I think certainly with 10X, Microsoft has got to get the buy-in of developers for this, uh, because if not, it will wither and die. And, and, and uh, you know, as a developer myself, you know, one's seen Microsoft move the goalposts so many times over the years. You know, you've got to try and get us going again. Say 10x is the way forward. You need, you need to write your apps to, to run on 10x, and but but it's okay because you you into do stuff will also still work and yada yada yada. Yeah. Yeah. Yada yada yada. That's 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 the buzzword. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's funny actually seeing um one of the videos that I did this week uh was I installed Windows 8, not 8.1, Windows 8, and actually. We were talking about a couple of weeks ago, weren't we, that uh, how uh, how well it worked on the Windows RT, and that, and that's uh, on on tablets, and that's primarily what I was using it for at the time. But it, it, it came as a real shock to to the system actually to see how unfriendly it was to desktop users it and was. Win thirty two applications as well. It was horrendous, yeah. Windows 8. I, I mean, I can still remember the, the absolute horror when I first booted the, you know, the first beaters up, and I thought they're they're really going with this because, you know, it was it was wonderful on a tablet. It made perfect sense on a tablet, but for a, a user who's used to a start menu uh, on Windows, which which Microsoft had used, you know, th since Windows 95, it was such an awful wrench and just worked in such a clunky fashion. So, I mean, I saw people almost trying to recreate their start menu with icons on desktops and things to try and so, so, so they didn't have to switch to the full screen start menu. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was a real shock to the system when I, in, when I installed that because um, there's no start button <laughs> at all. You know, it's like, where, where's this? And then when you had uh, the task switching, I've forgotten how it was done through the, through the little. Yeah, the charms, yeah. To the, to the left hand side to do task switching. But the, the desktop was treated as a, a task in its own, or an application in its own right with its content. So it really messed up that sort of, um, that that multitasking. So you had, you know, tablet apps and then you had desktop apps. And it, it just, it feels, it was amazing how it feels wrong. But at the time when I was using a touch device, actually it was pretty natural. So it just, it just shows you how, um, you know, just the right operating system for the right device uh, makes a big difference. So in the video, I tried, I went through the, one thing I did like as well, you get to name your PC when you install it as well, which I wish you <laughs> could do that now. Um, yeah, but that, that start menu, everything there on the start menu, and you had to move your mouse right down to that bottom corner. And it, it even kept catching me out, catching me out while I was making the video, you know, not quite clicking yeah. it in the right place. And uh, I was trying to remember how to do task switching and um, how to do side by side in of apps, and it took me ages actually. I realised you've got to have, you have to have it in a higher resolution to get it, so you could um, side by side apps as well. But even then, you could only have as um, like a a three quarter split. You couldn't have it fifty fifty. I couldn't get it to go fifty fifty. Um, you have it like a, a banner on the left or a banner on the right, and that was it. Yeah. So it's just a really alien concept to how Windows is now. Mm. Uh, and even yeah. like the, the the quick search, you know, like now you just, I mean, I, I use that search box to just about everything um, to launch applications and finding files and everything else. And, you know, that that wasn't there. It's, it's amazing how far it's come. Yeah, it is. It, it really is. It's. It, I mean, I mean, I tend to use a Power Toys Run for for, for for most of my apps starting now. But yes, definitely. But I, mean, I do think that Microsoft has kind of been, you know, rolling back that Windows 8 design paradigm. Um but I don't know, maybe it's some corporate pride that stopped them saying, OK, that was wrong. Here's your start menu back. Because they have gradually brought it back bit by bit, the start menu as it was before. Um, but it's almost like there's some kind of corporate mentality that says, no, we can't possibly go back to where we were. <laughs> uh, yeah. But we're going to gradually bring things back in bits and pieces. But of course, Windows 10X is, 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 is a whole new change, isn't it? It's, it's, it's completely different again. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, yeah, it's something interesting when, when Microsoft throw these user interface changes out uh, a bit like with vista um it takes them another operating system before yeah uh, users got happy with it like back to windows 7 and then i think you know even windows 8 one didn't it addressed some of the issues but really windows 10 was where it brought things back to some kind of normality so exactly yeah, yeah. And, and and i mean i think the danger with 10x is um 
lots of it do you know look to me from what i've seen that it does look like it's more of a touch first operating system that's how they envisaged it it would run on the on the neo or, or you know folding screens and things and it's kind of been shoehorned now so it's going to work on a clamshell machine and i'm concerned that people might expect it to work like ordinary windows works and be in for a bit of a shock yeah It'd be inter interesting to see. So that's my look back at Windows 8. Next on the list, it will be 8.1 to see whether, how much difference that actually made. So how do you actually make things like that work on Windows 10 with, with, with Hyper-V? <laughs> well, Windows 8, and going back earlier, there's actually, um, I did an article about this last year, and I realized I never actually made a video about it. So I recorded a video of it uh, last week on that as well. So uh, how to run old operating systems or Windows operating systems on Hyper-V. They all work really well, actually. But there's a few little tricks to do, like enable legacy mode. Uh, if you get the old operating systems like NT4 and 351, you've got to have small hard drives with fixed size and don't use the dynamic hard drives. Um, but a little few little tips that I put together into one video so that you can... Uh, you can have a go at doing that. So if you feel like reminiscing and putting Windows NT351 on your £2,000 laptop, Surface laptop or your Surface, your Surface book, then go for it. You can get NT351 on there, which I still think NT4, I guess, was, the, was, was probably the high point. But I, I, I did have a fond spot for it. Three, five, one. I see three five 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 one for me because that was the point where they they worked really hard to optimize the kernel down so it would run in about it was about twelve megs it ran in I think because because I think NT three one had some fairly epic memory but we to I can remember talking to a, a, one of one of the engineers who worked on the, on the project at the time he was saying that you know they they just optimized it and just you know they, they had targets to try and shrink it down and shrink it down so it would run in less memory and they had to set this kind of um a whiteboard with a a line going down to the point where they wanted to, to, to get to. And it was like each time they got it a bit a bit lower, it was like, yes, another celebration. So, uh, and then of course, ever since then, it's been, <laughs> the only way is up as far as, as, far as uh, resource uh, <laughs> requirements are. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, I think I'm, I've mentioned this on the shows before, but I worked on the one of the first in, in implementations of Citrix on Windows NT351 before there was NT4 with the terminal server modes. There was Citrix as a as a kind of a hack to a hack add-on to uh, NT351, kind of unofficially supported by Microsoft and uh, BT were rolling out in the UK and they played with that and did a bit of work on that. Great system. Uh, I had about 200 users on it until it blew screens on a Friday afternoon <laughs> and all 200 <laughs> users got kicked off. But, oh. but up until that point, it was brilliant. <laughs> so we, we used thin clients with them, you know, proper thin clients, you know, wise terminals. Yeah, very well, yeah. Wise terminals, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, so it all worked great, and you, the Citrix ICA client until the server decided to uh, to blue screen, and then you had to wait for it to to uh, reboot and everything else. And uh, two hundred people trying to ring your IT service desk at the same time. <laughs> fond fond memories. Anybody who's worked in IT will know that experience of when of horror when the when you see the the machine go blue. <laughs> Exactly, uh, of course. Yeah. Of course, these days you, you would all be clustered, wouldn't you? Would, would you yeah, yeah, bottom machine, yeah. so it would be fine. It would scale down gracefully as opposed to everything suddenly abruptly stop. People say, well, I was halfway through my critical Word document. Where is it? Well, I think it might have gone if you weren't saving. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're all cloud based now, aren't we? Of course, but fully scalable. Yeah, we are. I mean, it's a, uh, it is, it is funny sometimes as as I'm working on say a long document that's saved saved in say OneDrive, and Windows is quietly saying, you know, I'm tapping away and it's being saved almost with every character because yeah. more, more than once I've I've had an issue where, for example, there's been a power cut and boom, the PC's gone, and then I rebooted it and it says, here we are, I fixed it for you. And it's, oh, great, it all works. Yeah, yeah, it just we I, I still get the phone calls. Um, I. I Although the usual one is, it said say, do you want to save it? And I said no, but I do want to get it. Can I have it back, please? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can't. Now, moving more modern than uh, Windows NT351, we did get a new uh, dev channel build last week, but there wasn't a huge amount of changes with it. No, I mean, really, I'd say, I'd say the the, 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 the biggest change perhaps for enthusiasts is, of course, that they did fix the um, X64 emulation for ARM64, yep. which is... Uh, I think that that was quite an important yeah. one. That was a bit, was yeah. a bit embarrassing. But aside from that, I mean, 
there wasn't an awful lot was there they there were some bits and pieces around the converged clipboard history um that they've they're, they're finally rolling out the the managing create storage spaces and settings to wall inside side as the dev channel as opposed to a few lucky people um but that that was really I mean, there were some fixes but not a lot and then of course they followed they followed that up with a another of their testing the servicing pipeline updates which they said it doesn't yeah. include anything new and luckily this time not including anything new did not mean we've we've broken arm 60 formulation so sorry x60 yeah. formulation for arm so that, that was good but yeah it was it's kind of quiet you're kind of wondering what's going to happen next i mean it's uh you know i mean this is this is supposed to be the dev channel that the, the you know the, the bleeding edge and it's just not a lot happening on it still yeah that's it there's very there are very minor changes and uh um yeah like you say it was, it's important they fix the arm stuff as well which broke by i don't know how they managed to break that considering it was nothing was being updated but anyway <laughs> well i think i think it was the installer wasn't it, it was uh, there was um uh, i mean they they mentioned uh the c plus plus redistributable which was um i think is perhaps got changed out you know they perhaps included included an invalid one in the install set and that's what broke it so so yeah so when it says nothing changed doesn't mean the installer itself hasn't changed <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah plenty of fixes in there and but there and some game fixes as well but there's still a fairly large list of of known in in, in known issues but um yeah nothing too i mean uh, i mean could this be a case of yeah, all hands are still to the pump to try and get windows 10x out or are um, these very different teams i mean i've no idea what's going on really yeah good don't know gary i don't i don't think they really talk about how the um they split teams up like that I don't really. Um, In fact, Windows 10X is kind of not, still not even a phrase that anybody's allowed to talk about, I don't think, is it? <laughs> no, you, it doesn't exist. Not in public, that's for sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, a, I mean, it's, it, well, no, it's acknowledged, but it's, uh, in, terms, in, terms of where, in terms of where where it is, they say nothing at all. But as I say, uh, you know, I do suspect there's been some controlled leakage. So <laughs> just a sort of a float <laughs> idea is. Yeah, yeah, it could well be. Um, I, I think they've been waiting for someone to stick it on a Lumia 950. We really want to see how it's going to go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> now, Lumia 950, that's a word that is banned around Microsoft, I believe. <laughs> word Lumia, not, yeah, it's, it's called the L word. Don't say the L word. <laughs> yeah, it did cost a bit of money, that one, I suppose. Uh, you, the, um, we also got a, a release preview update last week, but again, not a huge amount in that. Yes, yeah, this, this 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 is for the, the beta and release preview um, uh, build one nine zero four two dot seven eight two, which is um, uh, twenty H two still. So again, some more for that. So, I mean, what do we think is going to come in twenty one H one? The well, converged the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably about the only new feature. Yeah, exactly. Because at, at some point soon, that's going to have to start. You're going to have to start seeing something in the in the beta chan chan channel around that, because you know that's where in theory the the new patches, you know, the, the new update should should go. Because you need to give um, you know admins time to test things out. That's the whole point of the beta. And at, at, at the moment, beta and release preview have been on the same build for quite yeah. a while, which is again. Yeah, it's not consistent with what they've done before. So I'm a little concerned about that as well because we're now end of January. If 21H1 is as small as everyone seems to think it's going to be, you'd have thought that's going to hit in March, surely. Um, so you'd want to – things should be changing now, I guess, is, is, is what I'm saying. I'm, yeah. I'm, it feels like we're still having the same conversation that, that we had, you know, towards the end of last year. Yeah, it does, yeah. And they did, they did push out um... – an update through that Windows Feature Experience Pack, which they talked about last year, and I th I'd forgotten they were going to even do that. Yeah, they did. They they shoved That's out a. Today. What was the thing? We are improving the reliability of screen snipping experience, especially yeah, with yeah. apps that actually often. Yay! Great. Although that said, I do use the screen the, the screen snipping tool an awful lot, so, yeah, so <laughs> I'm right, not going to yeah. complain too much about that. But again, it's one of those things. You think, yay, great! Surely you're going to do something a bit more exciting than this, but it's just as time gets, as time wears on, you 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 worry that is this going to be it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I know that they were they're using this model for testing feature updates, so maybe like the converged keyboard would come as a, in the feature experience patch yeah. pack rather than the, a full build update. But I'm I'm not sure how they keep a track then of of who's got what. 
what features require which operating system. So if a feature pack has a feature in it that is reliant on a core um, part that's in the build, you know, it, it's quite complicated. I'm, I'm hope that they've got a good ways of being able to do to manage all this. Yeah, I mean, it may well just be, be a case of if you, if you, if you want those new 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 toys, well, how about power toys? There's, there's some great toys in that. Yeah. Yeah, Power Toys, Power Toys is a very sensible way of doing it. <laughs> no, and I'm, I'm not joking about that. Power Toys is great. There's some really good stuff in there. I mean, I, said, I use Power Toys Run every day. It's 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 a brilliant tool, and uh, and I think the um uh the, the copying tool, the the, the Power re, 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 renaming uh, is is great. As is uh, Fancy Zones, if if which works really really well now. If you've got more than one screen, so it's almost like that's where the exciting stuff is at the moment. Yeah, yeah, and I suppose I can understand why they want to keep the the core operating system clean supported um and easy to manage for for enterprises and then you put all the features into these other bits and pieces you know the the, the, the enthusiast features yeah in fact they should maybe they should be yeah that power toy should be an enthusiast pack or something like that <laughs> or call it why don't a plus pack or something like that or oh, fastering yes, yes plus <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I was very sad to see that the, the windows feature experience pack still doesn't include space cadet pinball i mean what's going ah, on uh-huh. <laughs> and has it got any screen savers in it that's what i want to know yes or tweak ui which is which we took we're going back to the old power tools now um but yeah the, the old power tools now but tweak, tweak, tweak ui is a is a a tool where most of the, the the fun things have moved from that into the gui but still it, you could do some serious damage with, with with that toy. <laughs> yeah. I, I I've had multiple times I remember I think I don't maybe it was pre NT maybe it was NT4, pre NT4 where people could put the display resolution at a one. I think you probably still do it now if you try, but you put your display resolution at a, a, that your monitor can't handle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then you can't turn it back because you can't see it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think Windows is probably clever about that now, isn't it? I think it's it, yeah. it, it, it queries the monitor, but certainly with the old with the old CRT screens, you could do some horrific things to CRT screens that I think were borderline damaging to them, really. <laughs> yeah, I've had, I've had a few support tickets, not recently, but in the years gone by, where somebody changed the refresh rate or something like that to an unsupported re- refresh rate, and of course, you, that's it. Once you've apl- apply, and I know it has that little thing where it backs out after ten seconds, but I don't, don't know when that was introduced actually which version of windows that feature was in but i certainly had to i think i'm nt4 you know it was the uh yeah you could certainly mess about with it and break it if you really tried <laughs> it takes more effort now in in, in windows 10 but you can always break it <laughs> yeah yeah you can especially end users they can all they can always break theirs yes never underestimate the power of a user yeah um right what else did we have well there was a, there, there, there was an, an update that came out this week this is again very niche but uh you know the uh, service hub oh uh, yes yeah service <laughs> yeah. hub service hub too yeah yeah the gigantic very expensive mm-hmm. clever whiteboard things that microsoft uh uh is, is, is well i guess the world's changed a bit now but the yeah the thing was you you, you stick these huge things in, in in meeting rooms and you have your, your teams conversations your calls and things with a big screen you can draw on it's all very exciting collaborative um but um they were rolling out windows 10 uh 28h2 to those uh recently uh but they had to stop back in uh december because of some issues that customers were having after installation so they only got through i think about 70 percent of the updates they had to do before they called a halt and so which which is okay except for the fact that those 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 those, those machines i think were running windows 10 1703 the creators update and wow, so yeah, um an build that, yeah. exactly so you had the situation where they had to extend the life of the the team version of 1703 to, to i think 16th of march i think is the date um while they worked out what the heck was, was wrong with the new win, with, with, with new windows 10 the good news is they have said that they reckon they fixed it and it's gonna they're gonna start rolling out the, the um, via windows update uh the new windows 10 uh 20h2 team version team 2020 i think to um these devices the problem is they're not going to start it until late february and the reason why that's interesting is March 16th is when the support for the old version expires <laughs> and they're not extending that at all. So um, 
just a heads up, if you happen to be in an organization that's got one of those, you could have a busy time coming up because uh, uh, that there are options you can take. Obviously, you can you can do bare, bare metal res re restores or use the recovery tools to put the image on yourself manually or use business update. Uh, but certainly, if you wait for this stuff to come down by a window, well, by, by a Windows update, um, yeah, it's a little bit longer, to, to, to just a little bit longer to, to, to wait in a very short period between when it should appear and when support ends for the previous version. Yeah. So just keep just keep an eye on that. Yeah, you've got to be quick to get. You'll have to be quick to get that installed. Yeah, have you have other have you guys ever used a, a Surface Hub? I've seen I've one at one. Microsoft events, but that was it. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've played one, one at Microsoft events. But that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I had, I had to play with really the Surface Hub too, and, and I thought this is a glorious thing because it was, just, it was a lovely screen, and it worked really well. And then I saw the price. <laughs> I thought that's why it works so well. Mm. But it was very impressive, though. Yeah, yeah, they are they are lovely devices. It's um, I, I wonder the way we are now is they didn't probably get used as much, but I suppose eventually when we get back and we forget the homework and stuff, and we all get stuck in meeting rooms again for hours on end, then we'll be back using them. Yeah, soon. well, I think the the the, the, the thinking thinking is it, it will work work well for you know a hybrid environment where some people are in, are in in the meeting room, yeah. other people are connecting. Remotely, which I think is how we're going to probably work going forward. Those who who are fortunate enough to be able to to work from home will probably, you know, that's how it could be for the foreseeable future, I suspect. And um, yeah, yeah. It's uh, what was interesting was uh, I, th I think in their blog post on the matter they, they they said because of obviously the current situation they were laser focused on quality, and I thought they aren't normally. <laughs> <laughs> Explained a lot about eighteen oh nine, that's for sure. Uh, so, <laughs> it, well, if if it. If it compiles, it's job done. That that was the old rule. Now, yeah. now they're getting someone to, to get Bob to go and check that it, it can boots up for now. Exactly. But basically, it's it's if it compiles, can it run FS twenty twenty, and yeah. will it run on a, on a Lumia nine fifty? Those are the, 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 the three new rules, isn't it? That's it. The three things. Yeah. Those three things. Yeah. yeah three perfect. Pillars. Happy days. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're good then. We're good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that seems to make sense. I I did like the, the those when I when I get a brief play on them, but. Uh, it, it it's it's funny it's, it's a bit like the surface studio yes it's exactly a beautiful yeah. device and every time i see them I, th I forget which program i'm watching at the moment where they use them a lot there's an american medical oh, Arrow, drama. Was it? oh okay yeah, yeah. that was yeah there was an american medical drama that my wife watches the resident and they use surfaces for everything like they walk around with them they've got everybody's got a studio on the desks and <laughs> not quite sure whether the good old NHS would be wanting to pay for uh, Surface Studios. But also there's a sci-fi show I saw as well, which um, uses the same thing, but they don't have the branding deal, so they have stickers over the uh, Surface logo. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> it looked glorious. So I must, you know, and I, I think on you know, my desk here in my home office, it'd be fantastic to have one of those. But I just, every time I look at it and I see the cost of them, and you just think, well, what, how, what gaming power PC you could build and with a decent monitor for the price for me just I just can never it never just is in computes really for me yeah I mean that is I mean that is the issue I mean, I mean the studio is there's no twist around it if you've ever used one or touched one or whatever I mean it's a glorious bit of kit and you know, the screen is just you know, so good I don't think you can buy the screen separately can you but no, I, mean, you I, 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 I heard much things that could happen because the screen is is just glorious to use mm -hmm. Um, but of course the problem is they're really expensive and I have to say the studio specs are very, very long in the tooth now with the, with mm. the amount that they're asking for them. You'd kind of want to have some, something a bit better inside. Yeah. I think they're a couple of generations old, aren't they? And the GPUs are, are a couple of generations old and, um, yeah, yeah. It, even the, the yeah, I think I looked, it's like, it's 3000 pounds, isn't it? For something like that, Surface Studio 2. Yes, it's it's insane money really for for, for what it is. Yeah, it, although that screen is really good. <laughs> yeah, it is. I, I wonder how well that. I think it'd sell well that if you could buy that screen with the touch capacity and and, and the pen input, and then you know just um, USB and HDMI or whatever into a powerful PC, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I can remember. Um, I think when the, I think when the, when the last generation of studio first came out, and, and I spoke to to, to um uh, somebody. I might have been a PR person. I can't remember now, but um, uh, they were saying at at the time that there was plans to make the um the CPU unit of the Surface Studio 
interchangeable. So you see, so, 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 so you could, you know, you see, so you keep that glorious screen and just upgrade the, 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 you know, the, um, the guts behind it. But um, I wonder if that sort of has now slid into, into the background along with obviously the Surface Hub 2X, which has also disappeared. I should mention that in, I was talking there about the Surface Hub, Surface Hub 2S because the 2X has disappeared. Yeah. And that again had an interchangeable CPU, so you, so you mm. could, you know, or, no, I want to say CPU processing unit, which you could then obviously keep the glorious screen, but just upgrade the, the hardware behind it. Yeah, now that beautiful rotation, then it built into it that looked really oh, so, yeah. so nice. And and tiling as well, tiling and rotational kinds of stuff, yeah. yeah. But I guess uh, whatever version of version of Windows that's uh, that was running has, has either morphed into 10x or been sacrificed in the order of 10x. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think the only shipping product that sort of used that operating system that was shown at the times is probably the HoloLens 2, which is which is using a version of Windows Core, but specifically for the HoloLens 2. Mm. Yeah, it. Uh, I, I I just I think um, the the whole. What Microsoft need to do, they need to get Windows 10X, but I think they also need to just give Windows 10 a bit of polish because, you know, at the core, it's a very solid operating system. And I found when I was doing the Windows 8 testing, as, as much as the, the on a desktop machine, the, the UI kind of was, was annoying, the core of the system was rock solid. And, you know, that's the foundation they built Windows 10 on. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, if if you if you if, if I mean, if you want an annoying and annoying you, 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 you are, try and switch from, from Windows 10 to, to Mac OS if you've been using <laughs> Windows 10 for a while, and that's a properly annoying operating system. Using, I've got to say, so yeah, I mean, I'm using both. But yes, I mean, I think you're right. The w Windows 10, the issue it's got at the moment is it does lack polish. It's very easy to fall through with the cracks in Windows 10 and find yourself in the screen that looks an awful lot like Windows 7 or even earlier. Um, because it's not consistent at all. The UI is not at all consistent. I think that's one of the things we're hoping to see this year is they might be, you know, I mean, even if they hit everything with the fluent brush, that's fine. As long as it's consistent throughout, the screens are the same. You don't feel like you've you've dropped into Windows XP or 2000 era management consoles and things. Yeah. And one thing I found when I was playing with Windows 8, uh, Windows 10X today is it's got some nice polish on the, the, the screen, minimize and maximize and the startup and the shutdown and it, it's it's refined. So it'd be nice to, if they could bring some of that perhaps to, to 10 um, because it's clear that 10X, as, as, as much as it's been in the future for Windows, it's not for power users or enterprises. So if they could apply some of those nice UI polish to uh, and effects to the to Windows 10 desktop, then you know that, that just benefits Windows 10 in general. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's what we want to see. Ho hopefully, we'll. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping that we'll get some conference and we'll get uh, the, given a lot of bits of Windows 10X to play with, and then we can have official looks at it rather than uh, um, sort of the playing about hacks that we're we're doing at, at the moment. Yeah. But it is good doing videos and then uh, waiting for someone to reply. And, uh, with, the, with the comment that you were expecting about being one of the four Windows phone users. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that many. Crikey. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm surprised. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know what the guy thought, but it's uh, it's, it's funny, actually. The YouTube chat doesn't seem to get this quite the same comments as it used to. They, they seem to have moved to other platforms, although it's, they're still there, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, they're a bit, they're, you see them more on other platforms now. Maybe it's time to do a TikTok in. Oh yeah, maybe maybe Windows 10X <laughs> on TikTok. I still I still feel like I'm really not the right kind of uh, generation for uh, for TikToks. <laughs> well, maybe if you, if you, if you did it to um um and uh, did a sea shanty at the same same at the same time, if you, you know you'd be, I mean it, it could go big. Well, you could, yeah. Yeah, you could do. You could. I mean, you definitely could do a C set shanty about Windows 10 X, something. It's, it's the C shell after all. Oh, <laughs> oh Gary, Gary, in there. There's, there's Gary. He's, he's straight in there. <laughs> and oh, there was me. Dear. And there was me about, about about to launch into into in, 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 into a um, soon will 10 X come. But no, I'm not going to do that now. I'm just going to step back. <laughs> Gary has just gone, gone straight in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just I get the feeling I'm 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 too old for for TikToks. I think uh, yeah, that's not. But yeah, you see um, I see see people doing. It, I think no, I can't I can't be doing that. 
I'm waiting for Richard's TikTok channel, and then I'll follow follow Richard. I shan't do a TikTok channel. I'm I am too old for TikTok. <laughs> um. Okay, so I think that was all about the headlines I had for this week, and I think next week I'm going to be talking Windows 8.1. I maybe I need to go back further and and go uh, go back to Windows 2000. I haven't looked at that for a while. Yes, you, you can do Windows go. eight. You can do Windows 8.1 and uh, and OneDrive placeholders, and then relive my my glorious rant of a few years ago when they took when they took my toy away from me. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. 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 Richard's rants. Yeah. <laughs> Got to be that bad. Yeah, and it's amazing actually how how. Um, for my personal stuff, I just switched everything to OneDrive and got it all on demand, and it, it works so well now. Um, it's such a good system. In fact, that was funny when uh, when I was doing the Windows 8 video. It's it's still called SkyDrive in Windows 8. Oh, bless! Happy days. Yeah. yeah, actually, OneDrive doesn't sound too bad. We have got used to that now, haven't we? But uh, it was a bit of a it was a big story at the time, wasn't it, with the Sky uh, Rupert Murdoch's Sky Corporation going after Microsoft for calling it SkyDrive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then were the days. Right. So, uh, Richard, where can we find you? Have you done any Lego recently? No, not yet, because I'm I'm having some problems ordering in my Lego uh, sub, sub sub supplies from abroad. I can't imagine what's causing the problems with importing oh, things no in idea. the UK. I, I don't think we'll go there. <laughs> yeah. No. Can't possibly think of anything that would cause problems there. Um, uh, so yeah, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Richard underscore Speed. And Gary, where can we find you? You can find me at Gary with two R's, WMA on Twitter, and uh, Tech as well. And uh, what's the latest you've got? You've got a gift guide? The gift guide's oh, up at the moment. We've got yeah. a new gift guide. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm supposed to be reviewing an, a, a foldable uh, electric bike, which is actually quite good, except for the first time I took it out, the chain broke. Which, ah. <laughs> so I'm now, now going to learn how, how maintainable it is, because they're going to send me a new chain out to replace. <laughs> That takes me back to go fixing the chain on my bike when I was <laughs> a lad. I might have to give you a call, Liam. Yeah. I seem to remember you put it on twiz you put it on one side, don't you, and then turn the yeah. pedals. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that sounds good. I mean, it does look good. It should be quite quite exciting if we get it working. But it's just getting it working. And obviously, the, we the weather has not not um, helped for doing yeah. bike tests the last few weeks. <laughs> no, definitely not. No. And I need to go and have a look. Uh, Jack got himself a new Kindle Paperwhite thing today, so um, I'm going to go and have a look, play with his Kindle shortly. I haven't used a Kindle. I think since I think I've got the first or second generation one. So. Uh, he got a new one today that's just arrived, so we're going to go and have a have a look at that. He didn't want to pay the the extra money that you do you get you have to pay to get rid of adverts, so he's got the adverts on his. Oh, I'll be just know what that looks like. Yeah, it's a nice little device actually, so mm -hmm. uh, I'll have to steal it from him while I uh, have a play on it. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, there's one with the backlight and everything on it. Right, well, you can follow me at ISDix on Twitter. Uh, we should be back uh, same time, same, next, same place next week. Um, we are going to try and do some retro episodes as well. Looking at, we, we, we do like our retro computing, so we are going to do a couple of specials on those and try and put some stuff together on that. Uh, so until next week, we'll see you then. Take care. Cheerio. <laughs>